first ball, first test. Nerves all around the ground. Here's Cairns. Well, there's no doubt the ball's going to move around off the seam. It may move a bit in the air, too. There's going to be a lot of playing and missing. And batsmen have got to have a very calm head here. It's very important to play the line of the ball rather than to go with the ball, which Trescothic did there. It's a very interesting move to come out with Michael Vaughan in partnership with Trescothic rather than Mark Butcher, who would be the preferred opening batsman. The reason is to have a left and right hander and upset the line of the bowlers. Morning, Marcus. <laughs> this is going to be fun, isn't it? This will test the man who's, uh, I think, shown a lot for England so far, but this is a big series for him. Yes, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a natural competitor. That's the first thing that he'll need to be out there. Secondly, he's a wonderful natural stroke maker. And therefore, there'll be some pressure on the bowlers who have been selected. I mean, Butler in a first test, for example. Going to be pressure on him too. Another one, and he's taken the outside edge. That's wonderful bowling from Cairns. New Zealand have an early breakthrough. This pitch is doing plenty early, and England have the worst possible start. Fantastic bowling from Chris Cairns. People are starting to talk about him as the world's premier all-rounder, and he's nailed three balls in a row on the spot. That didn't do a great deal. It may be left to Scothic what? A millimetre or two, it was enough to get the edge. There wasn't too much wrong with the batting, but Truscothic has gone for nothing, and England have nothing. In the air, and this could be another one. It is! Butch is gone. Can you believe it? Butler takes his first test catch. Cairns has strike twice in the over. Shades of 84. Six. That's off the middle of the bat. Maybe that's how good. Full of length to the inside. And Hussain has a boundary. So wickets at one end and runs at t'other. Again, Drum does well. It's a good toss to win. There's movement off the seam, there's just a hint in the air, it's a sort of overcast kind of a morning. What a shot that is, Michael Vaughan, he's been injured. He's in vintage touch and six more. This is the highlights, and they're good ones. Down the ground, that's a good shot too, and that'll run away for four. Not perfectly timed, but placement was the key. Edge this time gone, Michael Vaughan. Tickle. That is outstanding from Cairns. He found the length he wanted. He searched long and hard for Michael Vaughan's outside edge, and he's got it. And he picks it up there. That'll run away. And a good solid stroke from the England captain. See, that's too full and driven. And driven very, very well, too. Pretty much a long half volley, and that has rolled the whole way for four. Good shot. Hooking this time. It's a big top edge, and yeah. well, well. Yet another six, the third six of the morning. Short delivery from Ian Butler. Thorpe swivelling. It's a big top edge, really. I don't think he really fatted it, but it went the whole way. Edged and gone, Fleming. Good bowling from Drum. He brought uh, Thorpe into the drive. Thorpe was uh, hovering back a little with that balance. Glorious stroke. Gets Rambrakash underway. That is a beautiful shot. Straight away, Hussain aggressive and picks up a boundary. He does look a good player when he is uh, looking to score. Magnificent. We'll put those away. Just uh, that's the problem with the youngster at the moment. It's a little too length. But that's gone. Yeah, I'm going to say not too many problems with that. It's short and bashed away. It's 
115 for four. Nice stroke. That is a beautiful shot. He waited for it to get below the eyes and then punched it. Well, that's a good shot. That's a beautiful cricket shot. He's dancing, Ramprakash, and that races through point. That was their two sounds there. They think so, and so does the silver. He believes Ramprakash got a little bit of bat and a little bit of pad. Carries low through to Perori, and he's on his way. Edge down. Well, that is a rarity. That's a huge rarity. You will not see that very often. And Fleming straight away says, my fault, I'll carry the can. Well, you put your house on the New Zealand captain taking this. He does not spill slip catches. Look at that. Straight through. The big hands were there. He didn't really get near it, did he? It's taken him on the wrist region. And that's something you just don't see. Stephen Fleming spilling a catch. Cracking shot. Look how square that's gone. That's just wide and mid-on. Picked it up early. Very close to LBW and LBW. Andrew Flintoff, miserable at test match level with the bat is more miserable now as he treads his way back to the pavilion England 151 for six in trouble again good stroke lovely cover drive from Foster it's a glorious shot Evans above just punching that down the ground shot of the day Oh, that's well done, because he waited and waited on that. Very clever bit of batting. He was going to lay into it a little earlier than he did in the end. Close. Very, very close. Yeah. It hustled on through. It kept low. Foster, not sure that he's overjoyed about it. He might have been thinking about leg side, but umpire bowed and said, you're on your way, son. Uh, Hussain comes down the track and he hits Vittori down the ground for four. I didn't think he hit that perfectly, but he's either got a very good bat or he timed it better. Through the covers. Lovely placement. Just caressed, really. And a good boundary for England to end the over. It's 205 for seven. Over the top. Could be caught. Is caught. He's picked up his first test wicket. Short and wide, and Giles has gone after it. And Drum's taken the catch. Well, not perhaps the sort of area you might think you might get your first test wicket caught deep third man. But it'll do. He'll take it. Drops it in short. Giles goes after it. And Drum circling to his right. Two hands. I've got it. One of the shots of the day, Hussain raises both arms and says, you little beauty, 100 against New Zealand for the very first time. Well, he may uh, have thought it wasn't going to be his day when he lost the toss and uh, subjected England to uh, first use of this pitch, but I bet he thinks it's his day now. That is a marvellous innings from uh, England's captain. Through to three figures for the 10th time, and uh, it's been a masterful effort held the team together and he's gone to his hundred with a glorious stroke loves it gone Kadic thinks uh, that must have been missing leg stump but uh, he's had to go Shot coming back in. It was given him out. 
It came back a long, long way. Hussain cannot believe it. Another LBW. And Drum picks up three. But I've got to tell you, this didn't look uh, pretty live. 81.2 overs. England batted for their 228. Hussain absolutely outstanding. 106 is 10th Test century. Vaughan looked uh, promising. Ramprakash a little unlucky. And support too from the keeper, James Foster, with 19. Not a bad effort from England. I think it set them up pretty well. 2 2 8 all out late in the day. New Zealand bowled pretty well. Cairns, 3 for 58. Drum, standout for me, 20.2 overs. 3 for 36. Eight maidens in the process. His first over, remember, went for 12. Butler, 2 for 59. He's got a couple under his belt. He'll learn from that. And Astle, 2 for 32. Did a great job for his skipper when he needed to block up one end. Again, another big shout, and that's good enough this time. It was fuller. It swung back in towards Mark Richardson. And Ahsoka De Silva says to uh, Matthew Hoggard, you've got him this time. It's fine. All credit to the batsman. Touch of width, and he's flashed onto it. Thank you. Shot. Oh, boy. Yes, Daniel Vittori. That is out of the middle. That's gone. A million miles an hour. Vittori didn't move, either did the fielders. I thought that uh, Thorpe may have put that down, but he sucked it in beautifully. And Horn has gone. Good bowling from Hoggart. The outswinger did work in the end. One catch and one great snatch here. It is a beauty. England are on top of their game. They've been waiting. Horn just probing a little further forward. And that is a sharp catch. On the drive. Beautiful shot. Daniel Vittori is growing in confidence. Oh, hooking this time. They're pulling over the top of mid on Daniel Vittori. He is seeing it well. That's gone for 4-2. No, and out. Well, there's your answer. Around the wicket he came. It was short and it was wide. The feet didn't really get out to the ball there from Vittori. He's on his way. His valuable innings has ended at 42. Wonderful shot. I've got over pitching uh, on a very rare occasion, and Vincent says, I'll take that. Vincent on 12. Bowling all over the place. Oh, what a beauty. Well, he's on for all 10. It's early days. He's got the first four. What an absolute crackerjack. We've just talked about a battle. The battle's over for Lou Vincent. Big shout here. This uh, yeah, gone. It didn't move. It straightened. Astor was looking for outswing. It wasn't there. He played around it. And Hoggard picks up five. That's uh, super stroke. One thing will stand out in the replay, and that's the straightness of the blade. Gone, taken comfortably too far. Majal sucks one in, straight into the belly. Loose stroke from Fleming. He was uh, patient for a long time. Nearly an hour and a half at the crease. And he went feeling for one, and Caddick gets his first, finally. Well, from the Port Hills end, it's all changed for Andrew Caddick. Oh, in the bag, Farmer. Yeah. Down the strong off, sucks that in. What an easy catch he made it look in the end, but that was flying off the thick edge, and Cairns now then is gone. Caddick two and one over. Boy, oh boy.
Well, let's have a look at the length. Just outside off stump. Cairns pushing forward hard with the hands. It went very quickly to Flintoff. Big shout. Yes, he's given him. The Barmy Army go Barmy. And Caddick has three in five deliveries. Down the wicket, good stroke, good stroke. Take that. Spanking shot from McMillan. Looked away and magnificently struck. Ho oh, ho, into the boundary, beautifully caught. Whackity do. And take that again in the over. Now 10 from it. Stunning shot there. Down the ground. Great shot. And hammered away for four more. Nicely caught. Very nicely caught. Michael Vaughan was the man out at Long On. And he had a few things to think about. This bright, clear sky was one of them. The boundary edge was another. That's the end of the innings. It completes a fabulous, fabulous bowling performance from Matthew Hoggard. Lovely little low catch from Nasser Hussein, but they'll gather around this fellow and they'll remember the day in Christchurch when a New England cricketer was born. There's no Goff here, there was no Caddick for half the day, but there's been Hoggard and Hoggard and Hoggard again. Beautifully pitched out swingers and a seven wicket haul that reflects bravery, stamina, and skill. One for nine at the start of the day. The New Zealanders then, and always a tough fight on their hands. Vittori played beautifully as the night watchman, settled himself in, and then got through to 42 with some good boundaries. But uh, he didn't get a lot of support, it's fair to say. And Vincent Fleming and Astle, Cairns, Perori all went uh, very, very quickly indeed left McMillan to fight pretty hard for 40 and play very boldly at the end and in the end when he was out it all ended too quickly from a New Zealand point of view 51.2 overs only they batted 147 all out Caddick he got his own way in the 16th over it took him that long to get up uh, a real steam and uh, he changed ends to bowl at the southern end where Hoggard found all his success 3 and 1 over 3 for 50 from 18 but Hoggard He's been sensational. Is that other word to describe him? Seven for 63, 21.2 overs. A lion-hearted performance, full on the old ticker, and he just kept running in. Brilliant, brilliant performance to give his side the ascendancy. Four. And boy, he drove right through Vaughan's defences. Michael Vaughan has played well, but he's made a big mistake here on a pitch where he should play straight. He has tried to hit this square through the onside. Look at the angle of the bat as it comes down. It is a top piece of bowling because it's right on target. Well done, young man. And Michael Vaughan will look at where he tried to hit that delivery. And on reflection, not the right spot. Bat goes off stump. Pulled away, that's gone. That is easy pickings for Triscothic. That's gone, that's time. That was a thud, not a clunk. Maybe we're about to go with shots like that into the next phase of this game. Lovely balance there. Well, we've seen two of his favourite areas. He's a very strong back foot player. You bang the ball in short, but even if you're Gillespie or McGrath, you tend to get punished. Unless, of course... Oh, unless, of course, he clubs it straight to cover. <laughs> well, this, let's just see the height. 
of this delivery from Butler. Yes, it's still, it's really in the hitting zone area, but you'll notice he's undercut this ball, Triscothic. In other words, he's got under the ball and hit it up. Well, that's a super stroke. It's a super stroke because he stood up and hit the ball right at the top of its bounce. Great confidence in that. Bounds yeah. out. Hussein decides to go. Doesn't leave it to Billy Bowden. And Hussein knows that he's felted a ball wide of off stump that he simply didn't have to play. To Graham Thorpe. A decent test match career behind him. He's on strike to Chris Drummond. And he's away. Oh, just like being in a dream, isn't it? A bit nervous. Padding the crease, first ball in a test innings, and you get a wide half volley. Lovely. Oh, dropped it. Dear me. New Zealand are missing their opportunities. And I think the game's too tight to miss opportunities. Now, hang on. Uh, we, have a, we have an extraordinary incident here at the Jade Stadium. The New Zealanders knew it straight away. Mark Butcher has trodden on his stumps. That's a shot. That is a cricket shot. Magnificent. Played one of those in the first innings too. And here for a good time. Just like that. Classical stroke, not much footwork, but just hit on the up with precision. And twisted every corner. Bowling, played it on! Well, he's really throwing the bat at that as Andy Flintoff. It's throwing off the middle for four. Great shot. 111 for five. Pulling and pulling well. Too short. He was always going for four. It's just too wide. It's four more. It's all that he needs. He's been disappointed, Graham Thorpe, on a couple of occasions when he's played that shot and found the field. It's a magnificent shot. Quite sublime. Yeah, don't ball there. 23 runs off the last 11 deliveries. And there's four more. And that's the echo of the previous four. That is, again, a sensational cricket shot. Four more. Another top cricket shot. Cutting this time, Flintoff, and cutting well. Boy, he has come to the crease in good form. Five boundaries now in his 20. Well, that's not patient. That's short, that's wide, and that is six. It's a cracking shot, and you feel for Butler. With there from Astle, and punished. Had to go there, and found the gap again, as he does so often, Graham Thorpe. Poor delivery from Nathan Astle. Well, that's elegant. It really is elegant. That is a marvellous cricket shot. The drive again, solid drive from Flintoff down the ground. He just keeps going. Torrey into the attack and, and operate with defensive fields and just try to stem the thing. However, Graham Thorpe has other ideas. If ever intent was signalled by a first ball stroke, that's it. Six. God, he hits the ball so hard. He's at two off drives now. That was one, and there was one about 20 minutes ago. But just as the fielder started to prowl to his right or left side, the ball was bouncing off the boundary ball. At a time when New Zealand's champion all-rounder is sitting 
and a lazy boy sideline watching England's future all rounder has taken over. Oh yeah. And there's the response from Flintoff. Almost cavalier, certainly Caribbean in its execution. Very nice. It, it's all about the work of the feet. It, great, great head position with Thorpe always, but the footwork here is very precise. That's a good strike. I really thought that was cleverly done because it, it got into a, in a way a bit too close to the ball and just decided, ah, look, it's my day and I'll keep going with the stroke. 200 is up for England. He's got all of this. And that's gone right through fine leg. Not easy to play that shot, it was drifting down leg, but his balance was just stunning because he's got a lot of bat on this. And there is the 100 partnership for Thorpe and Flintoff. Good stroke, this. He's been brilliant off the front foot, but boy, I don't think you want to drop short after lunch to this man. Crunched away, beautiful shot. Too short, Vittori. And Thorpe has picked off those time and again today. Too short, too inconsistent. That's a super shot. He stays in the stroke so well, Graham Thorpe. It's exemplary batting. Quite brilliant. Who does that in the world? Let me think. Brian Lara can do that. That's about knowing where your field is. Knowing where the spaces are and having the touch to execute the stroke. Yep. That'll go all the way too. Thorpe is getting into such a wonderful position to play the ball that he barely needs to hit it. All about timing. 50 up. Adjustment again, and four more inconsistent. Poor bowling. And Drum looks gone. Well, 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 well. He's a big fella, and he gives it a terrific crunch. It's, I know it's a full toss, but it's spread eagle, two fielders. That's the 34th four of the day. Believe it? Believe it not. And there's an indication of that. Short again. They've been too short all day, New Zealand. And dispatched. Ian Butler pays the price. Big hit. Big hit. Whoa. Court runs across the other side. And that is a hundred. Brilliant hundred, absolutely brilliant. His tenth in his career is third against New Zealand. He might not have scored too many better. Here's a look at virtual spectator. Graham Thorpe's 100. They are the singles, 14 of them, a the majority of them tucked in on that leg side through that square region there are the fours in blue many through the point region many through cover down the ground a couple of times primarily through that offside magnificent shots all around the wicket Graham Thorpe one more quite cleverly played Butler has a chat to Flintoff. 
really in a position to say too much. And there goes Vittori. That's where he's looking to hit him, wide of mid-on. He's opened up the stance, and anything there he can hit, short or full, will go. 300 up for England. Very good. Very good. I mean, <laughs> kind of running out of things to say about Thorpe, but you just watch the footwork and the position of the head in every stroke that he's played that's gone for four in this innings. Oh, he's got it. He's got a Test match 100. Andrew Flintoff has exorcised the demons that have haunted his batting for so long at this level. And that'll do. And so will that. This is a, a rampant effort. This is uh, like a cavalry charge now. It's in the air, and it's gone. There's a muscular stroke. I thought, in fact, McMillan had done enough, and I think the bowler, just for a second or two, felt he had as well. In other words, he was going to get a top edge. But look at the strength of the batsman. See, they normally go just straight in the air. He's normally just undercut that. Whoa. Now, the slog sweep. Now, that is a very good stroke, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the singles. No great surprise that they're uh, square of the wicket. Just nine of them. Those are the twos. Just two of them. <laughs> Here come the fours. 21 of them. And look how many are mid-off and extra cover. And a lot of those were early in the innings when... Uh, the New Zealand guys, in truth, bowled too full, too much into his strong area of, of, of the drive stroke. And then, of course, a couple of sixes as well. But it's an innings that, I'm afraid, played into Flintoff's hands. And the first part of it was... I mean, I've never seen a test side bowl to Flintoff where New Zealand bowled. Basically, they banged the ball in short of a length, about three inches outside off stump. The New Zealand team has allowed him to get going. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Like to see a lot more pressure on the short pitched ball at him, much closer to him. Not allowing him those big shots. Look at that, the spider. Almost like the spider in its web. Well, that's the way to answer it. That's a very classy. Now, we've talked about the thunderous stroke play, we haven't talked about touch stroke play. Then there's that one. That's the county cricket, Andrew Flintoff. That's exactly what we see in England. The kind of fellow runs in, bowls a length ball off stump and gets hit back over his head. That's quite usual in our part of the world. Big-hearted fellow drum, and <laughs> he's going to need to be. Because every time he errs, Graham Thorpe's going to put him away. Well, that's the sixth one, yeah. Someone's been busily typing downstairs. Yeah, but look how long it is since anybody disturbed a partnership. Fletcher yeah. and Greg in 1972-73. Uh, so that's a real feather in the cap for two players who've given us such a thrilling exhibition, really. I mean, uh, you know, they've been pretty special to watch, and I bet they've done it quicker than most others, too. Well, they've given Thorpe every chance to play the stroke, and I think he must have convinced them by now that he can pull it off. In the air and over the top. Oh, Mid-off thought he was in business, but it's been such clever batting. Why should he be? Four more. 360 for five. There's four of them. Four more, and he has his highest test score. Well done, Graham Thorpe. That'll mean a lot to him. Personally, and those in the know realise as well. Lovely strike. Lovely, easy swing of the arms, wasn't it? Oh, oh it's a pleasure to watch. 380 for five.
Well, that's high in the air. Man on the boundary looking for it and takes the catch. The partnership is broken. It's the substitute fielder. What a moment for him, Marcel McKenzie. He will remember that moment. But let's not worry too much about the catch or the bowling. Let's focus on Andy Flintoff. And let him have his moment. A first Test match 100 and how they appreciate it. A marvellous, marvellous knock comes to an end. 137 he scores. England, 387 for six. But every now and then, he's just been wayward and Thorpe this time climbs into it. That's a peach of a stroke. Third man's in, but no chance, and that has gone all the way. Billy Bowden just climbs uh, one or two rungs of the ladder. And so does the Barmy Army. As Thorpe just uh, peels off another six. That's an extraordinary stroke. All right, he was trying to hit it a bit square, let's be fair. So few times. He just, just hit one out there. You can't have men everywhere. That's cleared mid-wicket. Smashed away. Again, another dominating back foot shot from Graham Thorpe. Beautiful stroke. You tend at this stage of an innings start to run out of superlatives. Oh, I can take over and say superlatives. What a shot. Whistle over the back of square leg for six. Charging to 200. Oh. Wasn't that long ago he was off the list, then he was on the bottom, and now he's uh, fifth rung up from the bottom of the ladder. 187, and GB leg is under severe threat. Yes. Come on, we're waiting. Who's GB leg? He was a batsman. <laughs> you hit it that good? Four more. Smashed McMillan over his head. Shot. Beautiful placement. That is a wonderful shot. And with that, Graham Thorpe goes through to 199. Well, there he goes, Graham Thorpe, in a career of magic moments. This will be the best of all, 200. Well, he was always very frustrated with himself, they're never getting past 138, which he's done twice. He's now 200, he's got past that milestone. Now, surely England will uh, declare the innings. There is no point whatsoever in going on, and as I speak, they have declared the innings. Graham Thorpe, 200 not out. A big, big moment for him. Dropped second ball on four. He's gone on to make 200 from 332 minutes at the crease. 231 balls. And 28 fours and four sixes. First man there, the skipper. Absolutely brilliant. Second man, Andrew Flintoff. Came to the ground two for 63, England, uh, with a lead of 144, and they were in some trouble when they lost to Sane and Ramprakash. That brought uh, Thorpe and Flintoff together, and uh, it really was a situation where if uh, New Zealand had have picked up that catch of Thorpe's second ball, who knows what the end result might have been. But history will show 281 runs for that partnership. It's a, a world record for England against all countries and for all countries against New Zealand. Amazing stuff. Foster chimed in too with 22, but the Thorpe Flintoff show was absolutely supreme. Highest scores for both of them in Test cricket. Flintoff, in fact, uh, 42 and 
was his highest uh, before this innings. And Thorpe, 200. He raised his bat, and as he did, Hussain clapped him and then called him in to say, I've had enough, fellas. The innings is declared closed at 6 for 468. Lasted 96.4 overs. And uh, a lot of bowlers happy about that declaration. They had had enough too. Enough punishment. Butler, 3 for 137. Actually pulled it back late in the day to go for less than 6 and over. Drum, 2 for 130 from 32 overs. McMillan, 10 overs. He went for 66. 5.4 overs from uh, Astle. That was a talking point. Why did he not bowl uh, some more on the Fattori? He really did uh, cop some punishment from both Thorpe and Flintoff in particular because there was no real assistance there for him. The, the glaring thing there, of obviously, no cans. Four overs, no maidens, none for eight, and they were all bowled yesterday. Yes! Good shot, four. No fine leg. And there might be a few opportunities for these openers to pick up easy runs like that. Yes! Gone, four more. Andy Caddick, you've got to get off those pads. Trying to bowl fuller, trying to get it to swing, but that one just met the middle of the wood. Shot. Smacked off the back into the fence. 22 for none. That's four more. Maybe a little streaky this time round. Good stroke, beautiful shot. Authoritative stroke from Richardson. Crunching, cut. Smash to the boundary. Two fours in this over. Edged, good, brilliant bowling. Absolutely outstanding. Horn could do nothing, absolutely nothing with that. They call it the Jaffa. That is a cricket stroke, is near perfect. That's a beautiful shot. Oh. Yeah, lovely catch. Very good cricket. A fantastic length from Andrew Caddick. Lou Vincent has not had an easy game. Well, one thing's for sure in this over, Richardson will use his feet to Giles. Just like that. They're on fire this morning. Yeah. Plenty of bat there. Plenty. Yeah, that'll bother Giles much more than the shot down the ground. The shot down the ground will encourage Giles. Yes. Sweeping, Richardson. And sweeping very well. Totally in control of that shot. He is playing well. And look at that for a positive shot too. Down the pitch, quick shimmy of the feet. Got near the pitch of the ball and he went right through with his shot. It's gone. Raced through square leg. He's shown good balance uh, in the innings, Fleming. He's been very tight, very patient. He's waited and waited as he brings New Zealand's 100 up. And the balance is beautiful, really nice. He just uh, stays still, and then just as the ball comes onto the pads, the hands go high, and that is a glorious shot. Beautifully played. So elegant, so classical. Drift away, good stroke. Just a little full. Fleming looks determined. Oh, how about that? Out. Eventually. Good innings, though. 76, 119 for three. Okay, let's talk about the innings now. 
119 for three when you strode to the crease. It was still 431 mammoth runs needed needed to win. Uh, what was going through your mind at that stage? Survival <laughs> to start with. Um, we thought if we could bat two days, we could probably win the test. I mean, we're chasing 550, so it's a long way off. So you can't just look at the target. So it was session by session. So I just went out there. I'm always going to be aggressive because that's the way I play. If I play any other way, then I'm probably going to struggle. So that was my aim when I first went out there. Well, Andrew Cuddick has just bowled a snorter to Mark Richardson. Richardson has gone for 76. Nathan Astle is at the wicket-taking guard. He's played a great rear guard to save New Zealand against England before, Eden Park, on the, the last tour. What is in Astle now? This brilliant natural stroke maker has to contend with Andrew Caddick, pumped, really pumped, adrenaline flowing through his veins, three slips, two gullies and a short leg, and 15 minutes until the lunch break. away. Had a leg gully been there, he might have been away to the dressing room. That's Nathan Astle. It ain't the first time and neither is it the last time. I haven't seen Hoggard drop it down and drag it down short there. It's a good pitch still. Possible to play uh, the horizontal bat shots. Astle loves them. Pressing forward for a start. Plenty of bat on it. No one out there. That's Nathan Astle too. <laughs> you give him width, he'll look to go for it. Well, not a lot of foot movement, but this is what we talk about, hand-eye coordination for Astle. See, the foot just goes to there. But such a good eye. Yeah, but I think it's a, not a bad little bit of bowling either. I think it's yeah. a carrot ball, isn't it? it, it and, and because Astle's good enough, he's got a lot of bat on it. But had it swung another inch or two, then you've sucked him in. So it's quite interesting cricket. If, if Astle's prepared to throw the bat at the ball, like we see him do so often in one-day games, and Hoggard needn't be discouraged. Oh! Oof, that's good bowling. Man. Ah, this guy's got good bowling brain in him. Closer, fuller up. Yes, still just with the weight back a little for a start. Presses forward, and then that foot goes nowhere. Very good. Another excellent Yorker. It's a thoroughly entertaining over to go into lunch. This is the fourth day of the first test match. One uh, a pretty even Stephen morning. It's a good shot though. It's going to run away to deep midway. He's not going to go for four. They may run four though. And they have. One fifty up for New Zealand and just four hundred to win. Angling in towards the uh, pads of Astral. Nice stroke. Sort of call that uh, leaning on the delivery. And that's the reason why it didn't really go away to the boundary. But they ran four with uh, good urgency. A lot straighter. And this has got through. Asra Hussain has got a problem with his uh, middle finger of uh, his left hand. Can't get down. So two fours to Astle in this over. 154 for three. Good stroke. 
just a solid punch. And saying he's got a problem, I think it must be his right hand that there's a problem with because uh, it's very tentative going down for that. It went down with the wrong hand. How do you break it down in innings like that when you have to bat for two days? You want to contribute significantly, of course. Do you break it down into very small chunks? Absolutely. It's session by session, but the biggest thing for me is ball by ball. And uh, with such a long time to bat and such a big score to chase, if you're not focused on the next ball, then you're going to struggle. And that's why I tried to focus on that day, and uh, everything seemed to fall into place. Risky. But a bold stroke, he did throw a lot of bat at it, Astle, as he tends to do. And then it was one bounce four. You know, I think that's just swung a touch. I think it's just swung it. Caddick's pitched it up a little bit further. Drawn Astle into the stroke, it's a flamboyant stroke. Just look if this shape does, yeah. Starts wide and goes a little bit wider. So, Astle adhering to the old adage if you're going to flash flash hard and he did now oh, crunching cut shot back behind point this is good counter attacking much better stroke from Astle because he looked to get up over and hit it into the turf top of the bounce and pass point for another boundary he's got six now it's a good stroke in the air, and uh, Caddick thinks that there was an element of good fortune in there. He stood and stared for a considerable length of time. Well, this will be an interesting battle. It's a little overcast. Lights have all gone back on again. And will Hoggard swing it? Oh, good start, wasn't it? It's a little uppish from Nathan Astor, but it was pretty well dead straight. Pretty well timed. I like this approach from New Zealand. This is positive, isn't it? Both Astor and Fleming come out after lunch with positive intent. He's bowling from his favourite end again now, Matthew Hoggard. Straight away. Estel into action and is forced to field change. Mid on is now placed. One bounce four, but only just. And uh, I think Nathan Estel will get a couple more of these because it was not played convincingly. It's a good piece of bowling. A very good bouncer. Very straight. Yeah, that's right. Good line. Look at that, right over middle stump. And really, he was forced into that sort of almost a knee-jerk shot, wasn't it? Look at that. Something else to think about. Third one in the over. Big over for Astor, big over for New Zealand. Open thought for Hoggard, 189 for three. Hasn't happened for him today, for Matthew Hoggard. 14 runs off his first over back. Yeah. Well, that'll run away for four. Go through the gully region. It's 50 for Nathan Astle, and it is a well-played 52. Ten boundaries. Some typical strong Astle shots through the offside. A valuable knock. Actually, this is a very clever bit of batting. Look at the angle of the bat there. Deliberately using the face of the bat. And what little width there was. OK, so you got you got to 50, you got to 50 very well. Stephen Fleming was out, you'd been joined by Craig McMillan, another attacking player. Still more of the same, though, was it? Yeah, I mean, Mac and I, we, I mean, we enjoy batting together, we both play similarly. And we, we were talking about it would be a great, a great score to win, I suppose, in a joking sense to start with. And uh, he played his shots, and we just started to get a roll on and a roll on, and it was starting to get enjoyable out there. 
Now, what sort of field will we have? Will uh, Rampracash just give himself a wee bit of just a, just a pace? Yeah, <laughs> on the left of screen, I know, just stepping back just a bit. Oh, put it down. Just nothing more than a half, maybe a quarter chance, but a very clever bit of thinking from uh, Mark Rampracash. He gave himself room, understanding that he was now in there because the ball was going to race off the bat rather than off bat and pad. Well, it's sensible and actually went so fast it hit the helmet. So it didn't really ever go straight into the hands. He came up and it hit him before he was ready. It's in the air, but it's wide. Boundary. Uh, it's standard a liver batting. And he's as good a sort of player as just about anybody in the world, I'd say, Nathan Astle. Rufal. Well, that's more. That's really a lovely stroke. Much more convincing. Oh, it's a fantastic hit. He's onto that quickly, almost as if he felt the short pitcher had to come. And he's hit it hard and flat. There's a guy out there, what, five yards from where the ball was? Never moved a muscle, just had a look for it. And then heard it against the boards. Yes, I think even Hoggard there was impressed in a way. Beautiful, clean strike. Oh, he really is such a natural hitter of a cricket ball. Great eye-hand coordination. Two forty-two for four. That is very classical. It's a perfect use of the feet. Stays nicely in the stroke and makes sure that he hits right through the line of the ball. See, the head doesn't move up and down too much either. It's, it's a glide. That's gone again. Just for four, though, this time. Man back on the pull shot. Fine leg, deep back with square leg. Astle picks the gap perfectly. It's a deliberate attempt at a bouncer to get him hooking down. Uh, Deep backward square throat, but there's a lot of control. He's swung inside it with the body, rolled the wrists on it. That's gone too, this time in front of square. An even better stroke. Magnificence of Astel is uh, evident in the last half an hour. Collard, absolutely collared here, Andy Caddick. Nathan Astor was reading him at the moment like a book. It's uh, almost ahead of what Caddick is thinking. Oh, that's a beamer. That must have slipped. And uh, apology, a no ball, and a reaction from Astor that cannot be repeated. That's the nastiest of all. That's a horrific height to cop one at. It really is. I'm sure, uh, oh man, that is, that's the most terrible feeling you can have in cricket as a batsman. It's a split second where you think you're going to get cleaned up at pace. And a half folly, it's almost a, an apology in itself to make up for it. And Ashton will get three. And there it is, uh, Billy Bowden says, we're out of here. 20 minute break with New Zealand, 270 for six. It's been another entertaining couple of hours with Astor racing through to 83. Along the way, he lost to Fleming, 48, and McMillan, 24, and Perori, one. 26 overs, 130 runs in the session, and five runs per over to boot. Here's Ashley Giles.
who's over the wicket attack into uh, the rough and the leg stump area of Nathan Astle caused all sorts of mixed tremors and reactions before T. What he's actually saying to Astle is if you want to take us on, you're going to have to take a risk. Unless, of course, I bowl you some half volleys, in which case your timing is beyond me and beyond most other players in the world. It's uh, tended to be regarded this sort of bowling over the wicket by a left arm spinner as a, a defensive negative ploy. And sometimes I think you can fall into the uh, trap of uh, just putting the ball rather than actually bowling it and trying to spin it. Nestor uh, putting that to easy half volley away. He's uh, made this innings look so easy. 88 now, just 12 short of his eighth test century. And he's gone to 3,000 test runs, Martin. And they haven't been dull, have they? That average climbing all the time. Highest to 156, not out. Looking at Nathan Astle's 3,000th test run, it's also worth looking at that list. I think I better do this little bit of analysis. Keep the guy on my left quiet because he's top of that list as uh, the highest run getter in the history of cricket. John Wright behind him, then Stephen Fleming, which is uh, interesting, ahead of guys like uh, John Reid. Of course, he's played more tests than Reid. It's interesting to see Hadley up there as well. Then Turner, 41 tests, just behind Nathan Astle. Andrew Jones, what an underrated cricketer he was. And also on that list, again, most interestingly, Chris Cairns, who sadly we won't see for the rest of the series. And then with an average of 40, the great Bert Sutcliffe. Excellent play. Excellent play. It's just so controlled. He's really just doing as he pleases with every English bowler. This is not an easy shot because you're hitting slightly against the turn. It's the on drive, which means you've got to clear your hip out of the way. two for Nathan Astle, it's on his home ground. Eighth test century, the strike rate is extraordinary. His execution precision, outstanding. He hasn't dwelt on it for very long, has he? Let's have another look at how he got there. It was an extremely well-controlled stroke. He got on top of the ball, which meant that Craig White had to do some fielding, or had to try to do some fielding. Oh, dear. It wouldn't be a performance as a substitute fielder that Craig White will remember with a great deal of fondness, having dropped a catch down at third man in the first innings as well. He's got another chance to prove himself, but he can't do that, pull that one in either. Astle enjoying himself here. He hasn't had a good uh, run at Jay Stadium in his career. High score of just 45. And New Zealand bring 300 up. Three thousand test runs, uh, you know, a big milestone in any um, test cricketer's career. You know, you knocked that off just before you got your hundred. I mean, were you focusing on that at all? Did you? Was that in the back of your mind? I had no idea. Um, I think with me, the, the biggest thing, the stats, just hopefully they fall into place and you get told about them afterwards. And to me, if I'm doing that, then I'm concentrating on what I should be doing, and that's watching the ball. And uh, it's always nice to get those milestones and, and be told about them. You got your hundred. It was a, a I mean, a, an exceptional hundred. Uh, eight down at this stage. Ian Butler joins you, de debutante. 
Um, was that where you just really uh, said, well, I'm going to open my shoulders good and proper here, I've, I've got absolutely nothing to lose? I, I don't think I ever said that to myself, and I think that's what people can't actually believe I did. I just, I just tried to be positive, and uh, obviously it did work, but there wasn't a time in the innings where I said, OK, I'm just going to try and build everything out of the park, and it never happened that way. It just all kind of rolled into one, and I just played, and uh, it all worked out well. Well, England are persisting with this bouncer tactic that Astle has in pretty complete control when a length ball at off stump, he'd push into the covers and Flintoff could bowl five at the other guy. Hasn't been that sort of match though, has it? <laughs> You're right, it hasn't actually. It hasn't followed logic, has it? How about that? How about the links ball pushed into the covers? Too wide. <laughs> Great shot, wasn't it? Well, they're coming off his bat like. <laughs> Lovely sound, it's so crisp. Crack. Cover, which was uh, three quarters of the way back, was sort of wanting around to pick that up, and it just raced by. 19 fours, two sixes. Astor now 115. Um, I think that's a bit of a hoax. I think that that is just a little trick. I can't imagine Chris Cairns coming in next with Lou Vincent, the runner. So with the new ball taken, Matthew Hoggart is recalled into the attack at the southern end of the ground. trail he has played some fabulous shots it's a screamer nice shape huh. he just uh, he bent the back leg a little just to get a bit lower towards it and he used that uh, length of the bat almost a horizontal slash through cover Hoggard will do well, even by his standards, to retain his sense of calm here. Just start throwing all and everything into that. Just to quickly, Pips, throw in a couple of ideas before this game is wrapped up. I think they'll bring Chris Harris back for the base reserve. Lou Vincent might miss out. Well, oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. Straight down the ground, the best shot on the game that's like a one iron right out of the screws he stays in this it's really done with uh, almost a forearm jab and he's hit it as you say flush Session by session, this match has been a ripper to watch. They're on the feet. Every now and then you see a player who's just completely in what you call the zone. Thought was, even for a while Flintoff was yesterday, while well, Astle is in the zone. He's now got to 100 in boundaries, Nathan Astle. Look at that, 22 fours and two sixes. 130 from 127 balls. We've had more than 300 runs today in 72 overs. And that might well be four more. 18 from the over. Hoggard cannot believe it. 333 for eight. Told you. 
If he could get enough of the strike, it's on. 2.16 to win. Hoggard is uh, none for 98. That's a good ball. And that's out. Just a little thin scratch. Now we'll find out if Cairns will bat or not. What about the Chris Cairns factor? I mean, he, you know, scheduled obviously to bat around number six. You know, he didn't appear because of his injury. Did you know that before the inning started? Yeah, I knew that if, if we had a lot to get, Kenzie wasn't going to bat because his knee was quite bad. And, and if he had to come in earlier at six, maybe I wouldn't have played the way I did. So there's a lot of ifs and buts that you can look at. But when he strode out there, and because I was going well, it, it was always good. And, and we had a lot of fun out there when he, uh, when he arrived at the crease. Well, fun it was. I mean, you were nine down, still needed 217 to win. I mean, surely you couldn't win from there. Um, we, we never thought about it. We just were, we were, in a, we were on a roll. We were in a momentum swing. and. Um, you could tell the English were getting a little bit worried, so we just tried to just enjoy it and it just kept on going and going and going. Goes Astle again. Whoa! It's miles back. And Billy's enjoying it too. Holy cow. It's <laughs> massive. It's enormous, uh, humongous. It's extraordinary. New Zealand couldn't lay a bat on this fellow, Hoggard. In the first innings, they've taken 24 off the last seven balls he's bowled in this innings. With a new ball, too. Good bit of work. That is a very good bit of work. Astle quite happy with two. As Lou Vincent does the running for Chris Cairns. Hold on to your hats. There are more fireworks to come. They sure are. This is unbelievable entertainment. You, you couldn't, you couldn't write a script for this in Test match cricket. You'd be thrilled with it in a one-day game. <laughs> well, Hoggard has gone for 112. This is 23rd over. He must not uh, know where to bowl. Uh, Astor since reaching the hundred, three dot balls, <laughs> forty-seven runs, and just a matter of overs. Eighteen balls. That's 150 for Nathan Astle. Wow. That's one of the most ripping displays of power batting you could ever hope to see. Now 20 balls it took him to go from 100 to 152. 20 balls. 20 balls. 20. Oh, that's four more. Six more. Mamma mia. One hundred and eighty three to win. No, one hundred and eighty four to win. Oh. 
absolutely breathtaking. Average just climbing up to 40, and uh, so it should. High score, 158. There it is. It goes past the uh, Perth knock before Christmas. Right in front of his home crowd and family. There he goes again. That's huge. That's on the roof. That is miles up there. It's left the stadium. Andrew Caddick, brand new ball, has just been put out of Jade Stadium. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The cameraman must be absolutely going giddy trying to follow this. They're doing their best, but boy. 178 to win. And they've got to find another ball. That's the delay at the moment. They're going to find a ball that is, what, three, four, four overs old. So how are they going to do that? Four overs old has been hammered everywhere. Look at that for a skyscraper. It's just unbelievable. Look at the right there. Look at the runs that have just burst forth. The second new ball, 57 runs. Of 23 balls. Of which six of them went to the boundary, four of them cleared the boundary. As to 164, he's uh, seriously got sights on 200 here. And everybody up now saving the single. Bar the man at deep backward square. So Astor just places the ball down the ground. He'd like this to go for three. My suspicion is that it'll go for four. Well, that's probably all right. Uh, I reckon they'd rather bowl at Cairns. 76 for nine now. Last five overs, 11 runs per over. Nicely played by Estill, he uh, just punched it, probably had three on his mind, in fact. Well, Estill has uh, joined an interesting uh, list here, fourth inning centuries, for New Zealand against all countries. He is number 10, Congdon, 1973, that was uh, a lost match. New Zealand losing by 39 runs, chasing uh, 480. And Thompson and Young, that was a win back in 94. Shane Thompson, where did he go? Where did he go? Uh, just faded away. 120 each. Thompson and Young. John Wright, that was a nine wicket win uh, at Wellington against Australia in a one off test. Uh, Vic Pollard, that was a Nottingham with uh, Congdon. Jeremy Coney, who'll never forget that. Uh, 50 for the last wicket with Ewan Chatfield to beat Pakistan at Carisbrook. Turner here at Christchurch, Congdon here at uh, Christchurch as well, two years later. And Mark Burgess in the West Indies. It'll be interesting uh, being a fly on the wall there, those three. Astor Cairns, Vincent the runner. And 7 1 to win. But Vincent didn't say much. <laughs> I'd imagine Chris Keynes would have just said, well, Nathan, this is just one of those moments, one of those days. Just keep batting. It's instinctive. It's in the zone. It's supernatural. Interesting that nobody is back in the mid-off area. England with a more orthodox field. And so Astor's just going to advance and just nail anything. Six more. Oh. Well, the sound of this is <laughs> shotgun stuff. Charging. Hussain has uh, left it open. Astor says, I'll just have it. Top of the bounce. Momentum into the stroke. That is, what is that?
Now he goes leg side. Lordy Lord. Six more. <sighs> one seven five Astor. No, one eight one. Is that four or six? Amazing. That might have been six. Nice innings by New Zealand versus England in New Zealand. This overtakes Jeremy Coney's 174. Not out in 83-84. Oh, hello! What a shot into the com box! A massive blow! Three sixes in a row by Nathan Astill of Andrew Caddick, England's premier strike bowler. This is the most extraordinary display of hitting of a cricket ball that I think I've ever seen. That the world has ever seen. This has climbed over where we sit, over the commentary box. Nothing wrong with the delivery. It is just the most pure, perfect exhibition of hitting of all time. And Hussain cannot believe it. Astle has 187. New Zealand need 153 to win the game. This partnership is worth 64. They've only been out there together for 26 balls. Some of those are being blocked by Chris Cairns. The last seven balls bowled by Caddick have gone 4-6-6-4-6-6-6. Four, six, six, four, six, six, six. That's having a strike rate of 130 in a test match. Have a look at some of this. people in to save the single other than Rampakesh at long off and a long leg and a third man that's just missing leg stamp oh it should be out is it that must be out is it maybe not I think the fielder should have thrown quicker Astle is safely back just the first little hiccup from the New Zealanders who weren't sure about the business of the strike it's 404 for nine that was good bowling from Caddick Again, the Yorker, yes, he was too late getting the ball uh, out of the hand. Let's look at the virtual because uh, this partnership is incredible. Five fours, now the, that's uh, nice and simple, but look at this. Look at that. Swing down and have a look at the height the ball has gone. It's left the boundary. Oh, a long way. Beautiful strokes all around the ground. Swing around, of course, this is a combination of Astle and Cairns. Cairns has 18 of uh, 77. The ball's just flying everywhere. We've already lost one. That was out of the uh, stadium hit by Astle. Into a replacement ball at the moment. And look at them all. Five of those sixes are going over. Long off and extra cover. In no time at all, Astle and Cairns have concocted the highest partnership of the New Zealand innings and indeed the highest partnership for New Zealand in the match. 78 they've put on. That's another six. Another massive blow, slower ball from Flintoff. And crunched over long on by this completely extraordinary performer. Slow ball, 105 Ks, and Astle had to do all the work, and he did. Timing here, it's a great delivery. It doesn't matter. It's one hit away from 200 now. Oh, 
that's a lovely shot through extra cover for four that's a really classy little punch drive that's a great shot and some men back at long off and it deep extra cover but he gets it through two away from the most scintillating double century I think ever seen in this country goes to 199 Astle, and uh, we've just been told that uh, he will annihilate the fastest 200 in terms of balls faced. He will complete it comfortably. 212, Gilchrist just the other day. Astle's faced only 152. Cairns goes through the covers, same place Astle's just come from. It's just like a river. Rapids. Amazing stroke this. Cairns on 22. I'll just repeat uh, one more run, and this will be the fastest 200 of all time in the history of the game. 212 balls faced was the record by Gilchrist. Still has faced just 152 balls. I mean, he's he's got it. One more run. Two of the four fastest 200s, therefore, it would have occurred here in successive days. Thorpe yesterday, Astle here today. One more to get. That is 200 for Nathan Astle. It is enough to say that nobody in history has made 200 as fast as this, in greater style as this, or maybe to mean as much as this. The fastest 200 in Test cricket. When you look back and you think that Adam Gilchrist, who's a, a fantastic stroke maker in his own right, and he just knocked off the quickest double hundred just a couple of weeks before, you've just now knocked him off by 59 balls. I mean, it's exceptional, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's even looking at it now, I don't know if I, I, I know I've got the record. Looking at it is like, is that really me out there doing that? It's, um, it was surreal. I think some of it. It was like I was out there, but I wasn't out there. I was just, I was just having a lot of fun and. And I can't really remember any, any particular moment out there. It was just all rolled into one, and it was an, an hour and a half, two hours of, of good cricket. Astle, 217 minutes. And the only other fastest 200 in minutes was by Bradman. 214 minutes at Leeds back in 1930. And to, to threaten the Don's record in terms <laughs> of you know, minutes for a, for a, for a double hundred, and, and to, to nearly knock him off, but not quite, I mean, it's almost, it's just about right to be in second place, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I had no idea, once again, of, of uh, how long or how many minutes I was behind him or ahead of him. So, uh, as you said, to, to be second to the Dons uh, is, an I suppose, an achievement in itself. So, Hoggard, back into the attack. <laughs> Up in the air and uh, out of the ground. Six more. That's why the bumper's a risk. What a stupid bowl, and it's a good shot because Astle's actually had to fetch it from outside the off stump, but the pace is what he's backing on, 130 k's. That's what Astle wants. 100 partnership up in the 45th minute. 10 sixes now for Astle. 10, 27 fours, and only 115 to win. Oh, that's
that's nicely bowled by Holgar. That really is good stuff. It needs to be. This is turning into the bazaar. That's a good one day bowling there. It's tailing in, hugging in towards the batsman. So, not a bad thing for Astle actually, just to rotate the strike a bit more now, bring Cairns more into the fray. Here he goes, high in the air, and it's safe. And all around me, we've got the back door of the commentary box open. I can hear New Zealanders shouting, safe, safe, drop ball, drop, because they really think this is on. What has been a forlorn, hopeless event for them is one of the most riveting sporting occasions you can imagine. And one of the few shots of... The only shot that Astle hasn't got hold of and been in control of. He's gone past Martin Donnelly, the highest score for New, New Zealander against England. Oh, it's a lovely stroke. Beautiful cricket stroke. Guard lost his line here, and uh, it's just a, a nice little tuck off the, the hips by Nathan Astle. Comfortably put away. Pace is there for him, he just has to lean on it. Six men on the fence. Doesn't bother Astle, he hits it over them. That's halfway up the seats. It's another mighty blow. This guy isn't just hitting it over people's heads. He's hitting it so far, it's just, it's mesmeric. Yeah, I counted about 36 rows. It's just magnificent. I mean, the, the balance, when you're moving down the wicket to hold that balance against a, a ball 132 k's. See you later. Not without a tremor, because Nathan Astor has played the most fantastic innings that I think any of us have ever seen. 222 to give his team the chance. To give the world a reminder of what a thrilling game Test Match cricket can be, albeit in the most unusual fashion here. This has been an extraordinary game of cricket memorable for so many things but maybe most memorable for this man for nathan astle who from nothing has given us the finest entertainment you'd ever hope to see let's just salute him say anything to you in particular that you can remember? Um, well, it got to a stage when we got to about 110 and I was, I was starting to think that we could really win this and he was saying, no, you keep going. So um, we had discussions and we didn't agree, but um, we, we, it was just a, one of those things out there. If it, it had come off, it would have been brilliant. Looking back on it, maybe I could have changed the way, the way we played it in the end. Can I ask you, what were the things you didn't agree on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was, when we got round to 100, the 100 mark, I thought, we're in with a good show here. We've got two batters in. The wicket was playing well. The field was spread. Um, I said to him, can we pull it back a little bit? What do you reckon? And he said, no, no, we're in a, we're in a zone here. We're in, our, in a momentum swing, so let's just keep going. 
get to about 60 or, or 50 even, and then really have a good look at it. Thoughts of potentially keeping the ball on the ground. I mean, I, I sensed that if that had happened at some stage, NASA saying, well, I think what a freak. Yeah, I, I think it got, as I said, looking back on it, we should have probably tried to get ones, noodle around for a little bit, and then let the field come back up, and then maybe have gone again. Maybe that would have been a better way to play. But uh, as we said, we, we were out there having fun, and we just thought everything was going our way, so uh, why not pull off a fantastic win if we could have? Now, it was one of the greatest displays of six hitting that, that we've ever seen, that Test cricket history has ever seen. Um, your favourite? Have, have you got a favourite one? Can you remember <laughs> one in particular? Um, the one over cover off Caddick, I think that went up on the roof, was, was my favourite one. The biggest one, I think, was a straighter one off him again that went out of the ground. But the one over cover, um, that, that came off the bat pretty well. What about the bat? I mean, a lot of people must have asked you about the bat. Uh, it must be a beast. Uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of wood in it. It weighs about 212. Um, it needed a few repairs after that inning, so uh, I got that fixed up and, and then carried on using it. And then I was humming and hurrying, which I just put it on the, sh on the mantelpiece or just carry on using it. So uh, I am using it at the moment, so uh, I hope it's still got a few more runs in it. Not for long, I would, I would dare say. I, I guess it will hit the archives. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I will treasure that one. I'll put it away somewhere and, uh, and box it up and, and keep it for a long time. A keep it, or, or have you had any offers for it? I haven't had any offers yet, so uh, we just have to wait and see. Would it be, I mean, I might be stating the obvious, but the, the biggest and the best innings of your life? Yeah, well, I, I think what amazed me was um, just the length that we went for. Sure, sometimes you get in that zone and you're, you're hitting the ball well, you get a few sixes, you hit a few fours, but then you sky one or you nick one. But just the amount of sixes I hit, fours I hit, and just the dur duration, sorry, of the time that I was out there, and doing it was, uh, w was what uh, surprised me. OK, so New Zealand having to score 550 to win. What a joke that would have been. Absolutely bizarre. They had to bat two days to save the test, surely. That had to be the scenario. Horn and Richardson resumed this morning. Now get this, folks. They resumed this morning at 28 without loss. 28 without loss, OK? Mark that down. So that's 423 today I've scored. 76 for Richardson, who played very well. Caddick, 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 he did the damage early on. Fleming, 48, looked pretty good uh, in his innings, struck the ball nicely. So did McMillan, but it was all pretty carefree stuff. Let's get close, let's get some respectability, uh, and let's, uh, let's not say that uh, we didn't give it a go. <laughs> then Astle. Astle cut loose. He got uh, support for a little while from Vittori, a little while from Drum too, because there's some good partnerships here. Butler and he did very well because at this stage Astle was in full flight. There was a bizarre situation where Nasser Hussain was relieved because Chris Cairns was on strike. Put that in your hat. Cairns was on strike and England were happy. 23 not out for Cairns. Nathan Astle caught Foster Bold Hoggard, last man out for 222. It will go down as one of the most pure hitting displays I'm sure ever in the history of the game. Six for 122 for Caddick. Hoggard, a leveler shot.